Hey y'all, this past month on the internet has been all queer pirates and Bridgerton heavy breathing. And since I don't have HBO, the Regency candle has been lit within me. I have already watched, rewatched Bridgerton and also rewatch all of my favorite Regency shows and movies that I have available. You might have seen recently on here and on my Instagram that I have been slowly working my way into Regency. Thus far, I have my Regency short stays complete. Uh, last week, I finished the chemise to go along with that. And at the same time, I've been working with the Blacksdale pattern 1830s waistcoat to kind of get the fit right on it while working on that and kind of just searching the internet and I keep seeing these artist renditions of men wearing corsets. I really just appreciate it. Most of these photos that I'm showing or will show right now are done in a mocking manner but we all can kind of agree that society can be a little harsh when it comes to fashion changes and new trends coming along, even now. Working on this waistcoat and seeing artist renditions of men wearing corsets under and maybe a little bit of seeing the scene of the Bridgerton boys wearing their little corsets with their, um, where they were, when they're in their fencing outfits has inspired me to detour from the waistcoat pattern at the present moment and make my own Regency menswear stays. During my research, I found this extant garment titled Corset dated 1810 through 1850 on the Met website. Now, there isn't much tangible information for me to use, but I'm gonna use it as my inspiration Along with these kind of humorous images, I'm going to use my supplies that I purchased for my Regency short stays. I had plenty left over. I could actually probably make three more short stays using it. So I'm just going to use up some of that fabric. All right, let's make some Regency dandy stays. First, I need a pattern. I'm going to use this image and my very small knowledge of stays construction that I learned while making my red threaded stays. Since I know the general shape I want, I'm going to take a few measurements using some ribbon. I'm getting the center measurement. Here, I know I want to measure out two boning channels. I measured the width of where I'd want the seam to sit on this one and then the boning channel there. I should also note that I have absolutely no clue what I'm doing. I am just measuring different parts and looking at this garment. Fingers crossed I make something I can actually use. I'm gonna really quick make a mock-up of this. I wanna see if I got the measurements correct since I just measured using a ribbon. I wanted to take a second before I start working on my actual garment and kind of compare what I just patterned versus this extant garment on here. So right away I mimicked the front center with the two boning pieces, but because I'm using plastic boning and what I have on hand is thinner, this isn't as wide. I did the boning channel here and I actually did a seam right here and am going to have the boning right there, which I don't believe is what they did with the real garment based on the two photos that I can see. But 
it works out easier for me to have it there and it feels good when I try it on so comfort for me is more important than anything else and then the back it does show the back piece and it has the buttonhole and the button and the way it looks is a lot thinner but it's also wrinkled a little bit so I don't know what size it began at and then what it looks like now because it's been worn a certain amount and it's aged so I'm actually going to leave it a little bit larger so then it's not pulling on my back as much and I have more of a comfort level the fabric that I'm using is just a duck canvas from Joanne After I mark up my fabric pieces, I'm going to start by attaching the center seam and I made sure to leave enough seam allowance on the pattern that I could fold it over and then stitch that down to make the boning channels. And adding twill tape for the other boning channels. I then did the side seams exactly as I did the center seam. Finally came the fun part of adding the binding around all the edges. It was especially fun because I had randomly cut pieces of my binding and yeah. All right, so I have just finished it and I mean, it's not anything terribly exciting to look at right now. Chose a cute little button. I wanted to have the men's shirt done before trying it on, but I didn't have enough time today and I really just want to try it on and see what it looks like. Now this isn't done and this is just a draft altering, but I want to see, get an idea of it. So this is really to just smooth the stomach right in here and then smooth a little bit where the trousers would be. That's it on this dandy Regency corset. I really love it. I don't even understand how it came together so easily, but trying it on and wearing it a little bit around the house yesterday, I really had a good time with it and I'm excited to make my waistcoat to go over it now. If you enjoyed this video or if Bridgerton also lit a Regency candle, in you please like this video subscribe all the fun stuff and um thank you